very warm welcome to all of you myself professor nagre ss from kg somaya college kopargaon in this lecture we are going to study some important topics from the chapter electrochemical cells so the topics which we are going to take in this lecture the first important topic is measurement of emf second is wagendorf compensation method the third one is their standard cell so these are three important topics we are going to study in this current lecture before starting this lecture please subscribe my youtube channel and press the bell icon in order to get the notification for the upcoming video lectures on the important topics so let us start the these topics one by one so the first important topic in this lecture is what is emf we heard this word so many times in this chapter emf so basically emf stands for electromotive force this is a long form of this emf it is a electromotive force now how to define this emf so this emf is defined as the difference of potential which causes a current to flow from the electrode of higher potential to one of lower is called the emf of the cell we know very well that in a cell two types of the electrodes are there one is a cathode second is a anode one have the higher potential while the second one have the lower potential so whenever such a type of the difference is there in potential then it is the basic reason for the flow of current from the higher potential electrode towards the lower potential electrode and this is nothing but the emf of a particular cell this emf of a cell is expressed in units volt so volt is a unit for expressing this emf now for the measurement of emf potentiometers are used so these potentiometers are commonly used for the measurement of this emf now actually how to measure this emf so what are the different methods for the measurement of this emf so that we have to study now so for this purpose we have to study here one important method that is wagendorf compensation method now what is the use of this method how this method is useful for the measurement of emf so let let us know about this method so in this method unknown emf is opposed by known emf until two are equal so this is a basic important point of this method means two emf are there one is a known emf second is unknown emf these two emf are opposed to each other until two are equal the setup for this method are as shown in above figure so this is a setup for this particular point of compensation method this setup consists of the different important parts so what are the important parts so let us look towards them one by one it consists of wire ab of uniform cross section so this ab wire is there of uniform cross section a storage battery b of known emf this b is a storage battery of known emf eb is connected to wire ab this storage battery b is connected to wire ab this battery must supply constant emf of which must be which must be greater than the cell under consideration so this storage battery b supply a constant emf and this emf eb is greater than the emf of the cell which is under consideration the next important part present in this setup is the x the x is the experimental cell this x is called as experimental cell let us consider its emf as a ex the this x is a experimental cell for, for this cell we are interested to measure the emf so this emf for this experimental cell is to be considered as a ex so these two type of the cells is present in this setup one is a storage battery b and second is called as experimental cell x the emf eb and ex oppose one another these two emfs are there one is eb second is the ex these two emfs oppose one another for finding unknown emf ex of a cell x 
this unknown emf ex of a cell x we want to measure for this purpose the sliding contact c is move along wire eb this is sliding contact c is there it is moving continuously along the wire eb the sliding contact c is move along wire eb until position s is found and this wire this sliding contact c is moving continuously up till a point s is obtained when galvanometer gives no deflection so this s is a such a point along this wire ab when this point is obtained the galvanometer shows no deflection so these are the some important parts present in this setup now from eb and distance ab and as unknown emf ex is calculated as now from this three important readings one is called as the eb second is the distance ab and as so from this the ex is calculated as now this eb that is a potential for this storage battery b is directly proportional to the length ab and the potential for unknown cell or the given experimental cell is directly proportional to the length as on dividing ex by eb we get ex divided by eb is equal to length as divided by length ab if we rearrange this equation we get here ex is equal to length as upon length ab into eb and the condition is that eb must be greater than that of the ex so this is a simple equation by using this equation we can easily find out the potential of the given experimental cell or we can find out the unknown emf of the given experimental cell and in this case the condition must be followed this eb must be greater than the ex so this is a simple method called as the fog and drop compensation method by using this method we can easily find out the unknown emf of the particular cell now after studying this fog and drop compensation method let us look towards the next important point and the point is standard cell we come across this word so many times what is by the standard cell which cells are called as the standard cell and what are the different examples of this particular standard cells so what is by the standard cell the cell which satisfy following requirements are considered to be standard cell now there are some requirements for the given cell to be worked as a standard cell so these are the four requirements for the particular cell the first important requirement is it should have well known reproducible potential constant with the time means it must give us a constant potential constant or it must give reproducible potential constant with the time the second important requirement is it should show characteristics of reversibility of the cell means it that cell must be reversible the third one is it should not damage due to flow of current through it means whenever a flow of current is there from the battery or from the given cell it cannot get damaged due to that particular flow of current and the fourth important requirement is that it should show low temperature coefficient of emf that is the emf should be temperature independent this is the fourth important requirement is that it should be temperature independent means if we vary the temperature it cannot affect on the emf of the particular cell so if the given cell obeys or satisfy these are four requirements then the given cell is to be considered as a standard cell the above requirements are satisfied by western saturated and western unsaturated cells so they are known as standard cells so these two important cells are there one is a western saturated and second is a western unsaturated cells both these cells obey most of the requirements and that's why they are treated as a standard cells now we have to study here one important type among these two the western saturated standard cell this cell is shown in this given figure so this is a saturated western standard cell it is nothing but a s shape glass vessel it consists of the two arms this left arm this is the right arm in this left arm at the bottom there is a mercury above which a paste of mercury and mercury sulfate is there above which crystals of cadmium sulfate 8/3h2o is placed 
both arms of this h shaped glass vessel consist of a saturated cadmium sulfate solution so it is present in both these arms on a right arm at the bottom of this right arm a cadmium amalgam is there above which the crystals of cadmium sulfate 8 by 3 h2o is present at the bottom part of both these arms a wires are there for connecting purpose it is made from the platinum the left arm having the charge of positive while the right arm having the charge negative the above or the above part or the top part of both these arms left arm as well as the right arm they are sealed with the sealing wax it is to minimize or to stop the evaporation or the loss of the water due to evaporation so for this purpose it is packed with the help of sealing wax so this is the simple figure called as the saturated western standard cell this cell obeys all of the important requirements to be worked as a standard cell now how to represent this cell so this cell can be represented by such a type of the conventions so this figure is represented like this at the left hand side the negative electrode is there this is nothing but this negative electrode made from the cadmium amalgam so it is a cd h is taken x times vertical line cadmium sulfate 8 by 3 h2o vertical line cadmium sulfate vertical line hg plus so this is a simple representation of this particular saturated western standard cell and it is to be considered as a standard cell so this is the first important type of the standard cell now the second important type of the standard cell is called as the western unsaturated cell now if we compare saturated western standard cell to towards this western unsaturated cells both cells are exactly similar the only one difference is that in a western unsaturated cells there is absence of crystals of cadmium sulfate 8 by 3 h2o this is the only difference in both these cells saturated and unsaturated western standard cells so in this lecture we come across the important points such as what is in by emf how to measure the emf of a cell what is mean by fog and drop compensation method how this method is useful for the determination of emf of the given experimental cell what is mean by standard cell what are the requirements for a cell to be worked as a standard cell what are the types of the cell one is a saturated western standard cell and second is a unsaturated western standard cell what is the difference between the saturated and unsaturated western standard cell so these important points we cover in this lecture the remaining points from this chapter we will take in a next video lectures so with this i stop here thank you for watching this video thank you thank you so much